Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about uh, Apollonius problems um, as part of the advanced mathematics course presented on unizor.com. Um, if you watch it not from this website, I do recommend you actually to go to this website and watch it from it because there are comments uh, and, uh, and actually the site has the whole educational functionality with exams, etc. So, um, previous lecture uh, was dedicated to relatively simple Apollonius problems when um, we have to construct a circle um, tangential to lines and points. Well, points means passing through, actually. Um, but again, the most important and interesting part of Apollonius problems are those when the base given elements are um, among other circles, like lines and circles, or circles and circles, and we have to construct another circle which is tangential to these. And I promise that uh, there is a special approach to these problems um, uh, based on transformation called inversion. Well, first of all, um, let me talk about transformation in general. What, what is the transformation? We have actually learned many of those. Um, we have learned scaling, for instance, which is the base of um, similarity. Um, we have also um, uh, talked about um, uh, symmetry, uh, like symmetry relative to a line when the left part of this uh, of the plane is reflected to the right one and the right back to the left one and those which are on the line itself those points are transformed into themselves well that's a transformation when for each point on the plane you have some other point which is related to it and this uh, and the transformation is reversible um, because you can always apply this transformation backwards and you will return back to the original point. So that's transformation of points on the on the plane. Now, today I'm going to introduce something similar, um, uh, similar to a reflection relative to the straight line. This will be a reflection or symmetry relative to a circle. What it accomplishes? It accomplishes um, a relationship between the points inside the circle and points outside of the circle. So remember, whenever we're talking about symmetry relatively to the line, left goes to right and right goes to left. In this case, inside goes to outside and outside goes to inside. That's the base, that, that's the base of it. Now, what's very important is that um, in some way it's kind of magic math magic if you wish um, you probably are surprised when uh, some magician is uh, transformed one object into another right in front of your eyes and you don't know how it's done well this particular transformation can help you to transform circles into lines and lines into circles now when i learned this when i was basically in high school I was really impressed, I mean emotionally impressed. It's really like a small miracle, but in a completely different world. It's the, in the world of mathematics. And it really helps you to solve some more important problems. So that was my kind of magical and emotional attitude towards this particular transformation. And I hope you will kind of share it with me. So, what is inversion or symmetry relative to a circle? Well, first of all, you have to have a circle. So let's consider there is a circle. In the same way as you have a reflection relative to the line, you have to have a line to define this transformation, right? So in this case, we have a circle on the plane. It has a center and it has a radius. Now, how the points are transformed one into another? Well, let's consider any point inside P. Now, to, uh, to, to construct the point which corresponds to it, in this transformation, the point which is a target, the image of this actually. Um, you have to uh, draw a ray from O through P and uh, continue forward. 
and outside of this circle find a point P prime which is characterized only by the lengths relative to this length. So this length OP times this length OP prime should be equal to R square. Now another point inside Q for instance it's a little bit closer to the center than the point P. Again if we will find on this ray point Q which corresponds to it again the requirement is that OQ times OQ prime should be equal to the same r square. Now, but if this is closer, which means it's, it's smaller than this one, then this multiplier should be greater, right? So the closer points, uh, the closer point is towards the center. The further from the center would be its image in this transformation. Now, uh, how to transform backwards? Well, exactly the same way. If you have any point here, you uh, have this uh, connection between this point and the center, and find the point here, which corresponds in exactly the same way uh, to our main relationship between, main rule of this uh, transformation, main inversion rule, if you wish. So it's reversible, obviously. Uh, it's one-to-one -one correspondence between points inside and points outside which means that the number of points is, well, infinite here and there, but this seems to be bigger, right? Because this is restricted in, in just one circle, and this is the whole other uh, uh, points uh, on the plane. But still, since there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, we can say that the cardinality of these two sets of points is the same. All right, so this is a transformation. This is a definition. How to construct an image of a point. Now, it's defined for every point outside, you can find the one inside, and as far as the points inside, for every point inside except the center. Center is not really participating in this, um, because it's zero length, uh, and there is basically you have to have an infinitely uh, far positioned image and, well, infinity is abstraction, so we're not really talking about it. There is no infinitely uh, remote point. So point O is excluded from this transformation. It's not an image, it's not the source for this transformation. So any other point inside this circle is transformed into a corresponding point outside and backwards. Now the points on the circle itself are obviously transformed into themselves. Again, similarly to the reflection relative to the line when the points which are on this line are transformed into themselves by reflection, right? And why? It's obvious because this is already R, which means if you connect it and then you have to find the point which satisfies this particular equation, and if, if one multiplier is R, therefore, therefore the second one also should be R. So the points on the circle themselves are transformed into themselves. All right. Now, I will address two things. How the uh, lines are uh, transformed by this transformation, lines which are lying outside of the circle, how they are transformed inside, what happens with these, with these lines, what's the image of the line, and um, how the circles are uh, transformed. These two things. But let me just tell you in front, before everything, lines outside, outside are transformed into circles, which have the ra which which have one of the uh, uh, points, uh, which have the circle which passing through the center of the of the inversion circle. Okay, so again, something like this will be transformed into something like this, and uh, circles will be transformed into some circles here. So these are two things which I would like to prove to you. All right, so let's wipe out this and we will go to a concrete theorem number one about lines and circles. All right, so let's consider we have an inversion circle and a line 
Now, what I will do is the following. I will draw a perpendicular to the line. Let's say this is point P prime. Now, this is point P, such as that OP times OP prime is equal to R square. Now, what I'm going to do is the following. Let's make a circle with OP as a diameter. Now, my statement is that every point here would be reflected to point on this circle. That's the theorem, basically, which I'm going to prove. Which means that the line is transformed by inversion into this circle. Now, how can I prove it? Well, that's actually quite easy. Now, this is Q, this is Q prime. So, Q prime is any point on the line. Now, let's connect Q and P. So, what I know about OQ, because it's OQ times OQ prime is also R square. So, this is equal to this. Let me write it down. OP times OP prime is equal to OQ times OQ prime. From this, we see that OP divided by OQ prime OP OQ prime equals to OQ divided by OP prime, right? Now, let's consider these two triangles, OPQ and OP prime Q prime. Well, this OP uh, prime Q prime is right triangle, right? Because I said this is the perpendicular in the very beginning. I con constructed it this way. Now, um, what can I say about these two triangles? I see that uh, line uh, side OQ, OQ divided by OP prime is equal to OP divided by OQ prime. So sides are proportional to each other. Angle <coughs> is common. So we have a situation when two triangles have one common angle and the lines are proportional, sides, sides are proportional. Triangles are similar, as we know, from the rules of similarity. Now, if they're similar, then obviously their angles are equal. So this angle is equal to this angle, and this angle is right angle. So, as we see, points Q, whenever the Q prime is moving, this point Q is moving, but always triangle OQP is the right triangle. So, OP is viewed from the point Q at the right angle. And we know that the locus of all the points from which a particular segment is viewed at right angle is a circle, where this segment is a, a diameter. That's very simple. Uh, now, by the way, I mean, if you don't remember that this is true, just try to prove it, uh, and, and the proof is really very, very easy. So, if you know that this angle is always straight, uh, uh, it, it's always right, then um, this point belongs to, a, uh, belongs to a circle. It's a nice, nice little theory. I mean, the reverse is always true. I mean, if you have a, um, the diameter, then every point here views this diameter at the right angle, right? So you can always use this type of thing, just reverse the theorem. So, that's why Q always lies on a circle, regardless of where exactly Q prime is, this Q will be on the circle, which means that the line is transformed into a circle. When Q goes this way, you will get this piece of a circle. When you co goes this way, you will get that piece of a circle. And this point is transformed into this as our initial construction. So, what have we done? What have we proven? We have proven that the line, any line, lying outside of a circle, is transformed by inversion into a circle inside, which is passing through a center of the uh, inversion circle. Now, if this line is closer, then the p would be p prime would be closer to the radius, 
which means that OP also should be closer to the radius. So this line will go to a little bigger circle. And if line is tangential to an inversion circle, the uh, circle, which is uh, the, the image of that line, would be also tangential to this circle. So, that's it. Now, obviously, there is a reverse transformation from a circle to a line because we know that the inversion is uh, reflexive. So if this uh, is transformed into this, this will be transformed back into that. So any point outside would be uh, on this line would be a, a point inside on the circle and any point on the circle will be transformed into the line. So that's how a problem which states, for instance, something like if you have these two circles and let's say a point and you have to trans uh, and you have to uh, construct a circle which is tangential to these two and um, goes through this point what can you do well for instance you can do this let's use this point as a center of a big inversion circle this is the center doesn't look like a center Okay, doesn't matter. This would look more like a, cent like, like a circle. And we will transform everything using inversion. So, this circle, since it goes through a center, will be transformed into this line. This circle would be transformed into this line. And point will be transport transformed into point. Now what we can do, we can draw a circle which is tangential to two uh, straight lines and passing through a point and then transform everything back now to transform everything back we know that this line will be into this this line will be into this circle and this circle which is tangential to this would be transformed into something and that's my next theorem which shows that the circle is transformed into a circle so then you will get this as a result of transformation. All right. <coughs> so we need the second theorem. We need to talk about how circle is transformed. Okay. So line outside of a circle, of inversion circle, would be transformed into a circle inside the inversion circle. Now let's talk about what happens with circles. Okay, um, so let's say we have some kind of inversion circle here. It's centered somewhere. Um, now we have a circle here. So let's draw a line through, through the center. So this is O, this is M, this is A and B. Now this would be B and A, right? B is further from the center, so the B prime would be closer to the radius because product of OB times OB prime should be R square and product of OA and OA prime would be as well. Actually, we don't really need this point, wherever the center is. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm building a circle using A prime, B prime as a, um, uh, as a diameter. And I'm stating that this circle would be transformed uh, into this one. Let's try to prove it. Okay, let's take a point and draw it this way. Let's put it M N. That would be N prime M prime. <coughs> okay, let's connect A to N and N prime to A prime. So what do I know? I know that O N O N 
times O n prime is equal to R square and the same thing I can say about O a O a times O a prime right because these points are images of each other so from this I see that O n divided by O n divided by O a prime equals to O a divided by O n prime right from this again <coughs> O n divided by O a prime is equal to O a divided by O n prime so what do we see right now we see that the triangles O n a and O a prime n prime are similar because proportional sides and common angle which means that other angles are also uh, equal to each other right so like for instance this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle all right now what I would like to prove that if I connect this to this that I will get the right angle here that's what I'm going to prove and similarly I will connect N to B well I know that A and B is the right angle I know about that so if I will prove that angle A and B equals to angle A prime N prime B prime that would actually prove that all these points N prime lie on the circle all right so that's what I would like to prove now um, let's consider the second uh, uh, triangles what I know about uh, what I know about the other uh, triangle O and B and O and prime B prime I will have very similar thing O n on a prime equals to O B times times O B prime because both are R square right R square both from here O n divided by O B prime equals to O B divided by O n prime so again O n divided by O B prime is equal to O B divided by O N prime so obviously triangles O N B and O N prime B prime are also uh, similar to each other and the angles are therefore uh, the same now which angles this angle O and B right and this angle that's what I know and basically that is enough to prove that B prime N prime A prime is the right angle because let's think about angle a prime b prime sorry n prime b prime 
A prime and prime B prime. The one which I would like to prove that this is the right angle. Now, if you add it with this angle, plus angle N prime A prime B, B prime. These two angles are equal to this one, because this is an um, exterior angle of the triangle. So any exterior angle has to be equal to sum of two um, opposite angles, right? So it's equal to O, B prime, N prime. O, B prime, N prime. Now here, I can see that angle O, N, A, angle O, N, A, plus angle A, N, B, which is the right angle, plus 90 degrees, equals to angle O, N, B. Right? Now, angle O, N, B, this is my wavy line, equals to this one, O, B prime, N prime. So these two are equal. Therefore, these two must be equal. Now, angle um, and go n prime a prime b prime right a prime n prime a prime b prime this one with a double double arc is equal to o and a equals to this one so these two are equal so these are equal these are equal so these two must be equal so a prime a, a, a prime n prime b prime is equal to 90 degrees and basically that's the end of the proof which means all um, all points which are images of the points n lying here on the circle will be points from which this diameter a prime b prime is viewed at 90 degrees so this is also 90 degrees and this as we know is uh, a circle this is a locus of points from which given segment viewed at angle 90 degrees so basically a circle is transformed into a circle and obviously this circle outside is transformed back into the inside circle since everything is reversed and as I was saying before that allows us to solve the problems of Apollonius where uh, one of the components, given component, is a circle. That's the way how we are going to approach it. Well, um, that's it for today. I do recommend you to go to the unisor.com and um, do two things. Number one, read again the notes. And uh, there are some drawings there, so you can follow basically. There are different letters, I believe. I don't remember what letters I was using. Um, in, in the notes, but I do suggest you to use it, uh, to, 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 look, to look at it, to, to read it, and then close the website and try to prove the same thing on the piece of paper, just yourself. These two theorems, that the line outside is transformed into a circle which goes through a center of inversion, and a circle outside is transformed into some circle inside. Now, obviously we can have a little bit different situation. For instance, if this is a circle of inversion, maybe we can have a circle not just here, uh, maybe somewhere like here, like concentric maybe with this one. These are all different cases. Now there are only also cases like this, for instance, which is not uh, as, as trivial maybe as this one, but basically the situation is the same. It will still be a circle as a result of the inversion. So this part will be inversed into this one, and this one will be inversed into that one. So that, that, that's all true, and uh, I, I think I can leave it without the proof, but because for practical reasons I will not have cases like this, because I will have an inversion circle which is either puts everything outside or everything inside of it. Um, but anyway, it, it's true as well. So any circle 
even the circle which uh, intersects the inversion circle will still be transformed into a circle. Or if it touches the, uh, if it passes through the center of inversion, it would be some kind of a line. Well, um, basically that's it for today. Thank you very much. Uh, try to follow my recommendation about uh, going to this website and trying to, to, to do something yourself. That would be a very helpful exercise. Thanks very much and good luck.